Hello, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. How are you today? So, um, we're going to talk to Grandma Bell. But first, I like to explain because I don't think I've done a reading for you before. I see, hear, feel, sense, know. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. I try, um, try to describe the picture the best I can. They never waste a message. There is always a reason for whatever they show or say. Um, this is not an exact science. We communicate the best way we can. So anyway, if it doesn't, if it doesn't make any sense now, just keep it in mind because you'll either remember it later, see it later, or somebody else will validate it for you later and go, oh, I know, I know what she's talking about. And she won't give me all the details. Details are really none of my business. She, she'll give me just enough so you should be able to understand what she's talking about. So let's see what she's talking about. Okay, she's trying to validate herself. She'll give me two or three things, hopefully, to validate so you know for sure that it's her. She's mentioning apple and peach cobblers. So I'm assuming this is something she used to make. Know that when you smell those, imagine the smell of either one of those fresh out of the oven. You can smell this in the store, outside, in your car, in your house. Doesn't matter when you get that whiff. And I guess it's going to be either one, apple or peach cobbler. And she says more the smell of the cinnamon in them. Know that that's a sign from her. When you get a sign from her, you validate her, acknowledge her, tell her you love her, and ask her to bring you more if you want more. That's totally up to you. She says she's here to help. Okay. She's one of your guides. She's here to help you. I promise you a thousand percent. She can hear you. She can see you. Talk to her all you want to. She keeps saying help. Not, not that she needs help, but she's here to help. She's here to help. She wants to help. Okay. So whatever Grandma Bell was good at here, um, I always say, you don't ask Uncle Joe, who didn't have a pot to piss in, to, when he's up there. You don't ask him for help down here with that because he didn't understand how it worked. So you want to ask her for help with something she was good at here that she totally understands how it works. But you have to ask, and then you have to allow for whatever comes forward. that She can nudge people. You can't imagine what they can do. She can nudge people. Uh, somebody might call you out of the blue. Or somebody might offer you something out of the blue. That it's can't believe the things they've offered me. Anyway, but it's your free will choice. So she cannot override your free will choice. So that's why you have to ask and tell her it's okay. That's what you want. But then you have to allow it. My, my, guides, my guides go crazy because I got my free will choice. And I go, yeah, no, I don't want that. They go, Rhonda, we brought you some good stuff. Why are you saying no? So uh, that's our choice. It's Our life is all about choices. So she's still saying help. She wants to help. She wants to help. So let's see. So that's something she was very good at when she was here because she's like over the top, just almost pleading, let me help. Let me help. She has a big heart. Nothing but good coming from her, um, which they all do. Okay, so she's showing me literally find a quiet time. <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> I don't have any. Find a quiet time and just sit. And you do not have to talk to her out loud. We can talk telepathically. And I've talked to a real life person telepathically. Just. Okay, she's talked to her. 
tell her what it is you want. Just as if she's sitting there, right there with you, because actually she is. And now she's running in my kitchen. It's like they're in the next room. You can't see them, can't really hear them, but they're, just, they're right there. And now she's running back. She's kind of, was she a little antsy? Um, she's like in a hurry, hurry. Almost kind of scuffling her feet. You should hear that scuffle. It's not like she's walking, walking. It's like she's kind of scooting, not really sliding her feet, but she's kind of scooting them along and she's moving real fast. So you should hear that. I'm trying to see what kind of shoes she's got on. Sometimes that makes a difference because I try to describe the sound so you know exactly what kind of sound to listen to, listen for. They're almost like, they're almost like nursing shoes. Nurse's shoes, if you know what I mean. That she's got on her feet right now. I think back then they may not have had that kind of shoe, but that's what it, that's what they look like. So imagine the sound of that type of shoe, kind of, kind of scooting, and it's pretty fast. You may not hear it fast, but that's the way she's doing it. Again, that's a sign. Validate her, acknowledge her, tell her you love her, and ask her to bring you more signs if you want more. That's totally up. That's your free will choice. Totally up to you if you want to invite her in. I tell people it always helps to let them know they're welcome to, to come in. So... She wants you to literally find a quiet spot and literally, shall we say, pour your heart out to her. She says, oh, dearie, she's patting your right shoulder and she's kind of just patting like like you're like you're talking, like you're talking to her. And she's patting your right shoulder kind of like this. So you should feel back here as that's where she's showing it anyway. It doesn't have to be the exact spot. You should feel like a pressure. You might feel the padding. You might feel a little rhythm there. You might feel a, just a little pressure or warmth, tingling, goosebumps. You can feel coolness. It's usually not coolness, but it can be. So know that that's her. She has a, a whole lot of love for you. She says, she says you're basically on your path. You've taken a couple of, I call them the scenic route. <laughs> they'll show me, they'll show me a path and they'll show me like if it's really uphill or if it's really crooked or if it's out here somewhere. And uh, she shows me those were in the past. You've already had the, <laughs> she's showing one on each, showing one on each side. So you've already had a scenic route or two. But we always come back to our path. Now, whether we make the choice to get off of it again and do something that we know doesn't feel right, that we know is probably not in our best uh, interest, that's our totally our free will choice. And that's what my guides are going, man, you ought to see all the whoop de doos I've got on my path. My guys go, stop it, Rhonda. <laughs> but you're sitting. You're sitting on your path. You're sitting. She says you're sitting on your haunches. Why are you sitting? She's showing that you look right. You look left. You look right. You look left. You're looking. You're looking for it. You're looking for it. But it's right in front of you. It's it's right it's right there, but you have to move your feet to go that way. Oh, man, I hate it when the, I need more details. She doesn't really show your energy like scattered out. You're there. You're in the spot. You need to move forward. 
She says, what have you got to lose? <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's got a stick. <laughs> I'm not making fun of you, but it's like back in the day, I used to see pictures of them with a stick, with a string, with a carrot tied on it, holding it out in front of the mule because <laughs> the mule wouldn't go. The mule was stubborn and wouldn't go forward, so they'd dangle a carrot out there in front of it to make it walk. <laughs> That's what she's doing to you. <laughs> she's laughing. <laughs> she's laughing hysterically. She's still holding it out there. <laughs> she <laughs> she's going to put bling on the carrot. Because evidently you like a little bling. You like shiny objects. They attract you. <laughs> she said, now she says, jewelry. Do you like jewelry a lot? <laughs> she said, she's going to make it a shiny object that will attract you and get your attention. I don't know if she means physically or this is just kind of energetically. <laughs> That's really cute. I've never seen that before. So no. When you see, I can't say when you see every single carrot. Um, carrots will again be a sign for you, but it would have to be something unusual. You know, if you're walking through the grocery store and you see a bag of carrots, that's not it. If you go out and you planted carrots and you see pull carrots, that's not it. It would have to be an unusual carrot or somebody crunching one on TV or somebody holding one on a billboard or Maybe you could you could be walking through the store and one would be on the floor in front of you. Now that would be a sign. Or you could have carrots at home and one could roll off the counter. That'll be a sign. It has to be something a little out of the ordinary. It can't just be every plain old carrot. So again, validate or acknowledge or tell your lover and hold it up in front of yourself. <laughs> Let's see if she's going to tell me. What she's trying to lead you towards. And she says, you know, she says, you know, you're just. She says you're a scaredy cat. Scaredy pants. She's kind of got a good sense of humor. She's very lighthearted, very. Her energy is very, very light, very. She's kind of happy-go-lucky. Even if she wasn't that way here, she is now. But usually they come through the way that they were here, so you can recognize them. Not, not that they're that way now, always, but that way you can recognize, know for sure that that's them. Hang on, I'm asking her a question. I don't. Just at, literally sit down and ask her to help you go straight down this path. Ask her to open those doors. Ask her. She keeps showing me like a little bit further ahead of you, almost like dangling the carrot. It's like a spiral notebook. I don't know what she means about this. I don't know what it is about the notebook, the paper, the. I don't know if she wants you to write something down. Start writing things down. Okay. What do you want? What do you want your life to look, look like five years from now? And don't, don't go with the big fancy Cadillac and the big mansion on the hill. Not the, not the material things. Those will come when they're supposed to, if they're supposed to. You can ask, well, no, I manifested the new truck. I just got just the way I wanted it to. What do you want five years from now? She's holding up that spiral notebook. Write it down. Don't go into great detail, like how you expect to get it. Write down, I want to live in blah, blah town. 
in the next two, five years, whatever. I want to live in a white house or I want to have a red truck or just be let them work out the details in between. But it's not, see, now I'm mentioning material things. It's not about the house, the truck, the whatever. It's about what, what do you want to have in your life five years from now? She's mentioning five years. I know that sounds like a long time, but it's the steps in between. Write it down because they'll work you towards that. Don't do the material things. What do you want to feel like? What do you want your family to be like? What do you want to, do you want to go to school? Don't do the details. Just go, I would like to go to school to learn blah, blah, blah. Or I would like to have a job that makes me feel blah, blah, blah. Let her help work that out with you. And usually, and I haven't done it for a while, I'll do like five things every morning. Because our little squirrel brains go, I go, oh, I want a white one, I want a red one, I want a black one, I want pink. And then my guides go, make up your mind, Rhonda, your, your mind's spinning. You gotta live inside my head for a day. If you write it down, your guides, your grandma, your angels, whoever, no, black and white, this is what you want. This is what you want to feel like. It's got to be all positive things on your list. You can't say, I don't want this and I don't want that. It has to be positive side. So take that notebook and write that. She's being very, very, very strong about this. Because you are on your path. You're just not moving. She says you have a very big heart and a very clear head. Even if you don't think you have a clear head, she says you do. She says it's a little cluttered, but it's still basically you've got a very clear head. Now get that vision out there. And whatever it is that you're going to put on this piece of paper, if you can draw it, or if you can just make a little sticky note with whatever it is and stick it on your fridge, stick it on your mirror, just walk by and go, yep, I want that. I keep asking her where her Bible is. She's not answering. And I can't make them answer. It's hidden underneath something. Somebody's somebody's got it it's underneath it's like she closed it and she shoved it underneath like boxes and pile of clothes and just things that are kind of does somebody have some of her stuff still kind of stored in a corner or a back room or an attic or a basement or it's like just kind of it it's hidden nobody you can't just walk by and see it And it may not even be in the family. I don't, she's not saying. But wherever it is, it's just, it's just under a pile of stuff or in a pile of stuff. There's, there's a little girl, and I don't know that she's still little. She had longer blonde, well, lighter colored hair. Kind of curly. Could it be that somebody curled it? I can't, it doesn't, I don't, can't tell if it's natural curl or if, like somebody used to curl it all the time. Kind of long hair, at least when she was younger. And she used to play with grandma. Since grandma's been up there. I'm getting the feeling that this child is not that age now. That she's gotten older since this happened. I don't know how long grandma's been gone. But all 
I will say all. All that I know of. Young kids and um, animals. See them, hear them, no problem. Nobody's told them they can't do it yet. We've all had an imaginary friend when we were little, whether we remember it or not. They weren't imaginary. Usually about the time they get to be 9 or 10, then they kind of shut it shut it down because they know society's going to poo-poo them. If they say, hey, I see my grandma, great-grandma. So, anyway, this this young girl, like I said, I don't feel like she's that young now, used to interact with grandma since she's been on the other side. No problem. So they have, they have a very close connection. Almost feel like this child got older. Don't hold me 100% to that. So if she's older than 10, that's usually about the age. Just depends. It's like she, she knows she's there, but doesn't really interact with her or worry about talking to her. There's also was, I keep thinking these are was, a young boy with straight dark hair. I mean, straight, kind of all, almost like a bowl cut there for a while. That uh, he really didn't care to interact with somebody on the other side. He kind of ignored her. So he may not feel her around. So know that at least the one girl does. And I don't know whose child this is for sure. Okay, she's saying she can help with your kids. That again, she can't override their free will choice. She can't override yours either. You have to ask her. She can nudge them. She can uh, put certain people in their path. She can uh, put ideas in their head a little bit. And uh, it's, it's totally up to their free will choice what they choose to do. She says you have to allow them to fall on their face. You can't. Oh, <laughs> she's showing you wrapping them in bubble wrap. She says you can't. You can't wrap them in bubble wrap. They have to learn their own lessons. She says you just have to be there to guide them, like I'm trying to help guide you. Because I love you very much. I'm trying to get her to give me something to really concrete validate that it's her. She's showing me like a pony running off with a little kid and a little kid falls off. I have no idea. Maybe you did that. Maybe she had one of those. Or she was at a place where this happened with you. It's like the, it's like the pony took off running and, and the little kid just fell off. And I ask them not to give things like when you're too young that you can't remember. But that looked pretty young. Did she like to go to a lot of, um, like, ladies meetings, like church, maybe church meetings, or church, maybe she cooked for church dinners, or it looks like, it looks like the basement of a church with a bunch of women. Now, maybe it was just some other group that met in a church basement and a bunch of women that did something. And she's showing sewing. Sewing and quilting doesn't mean she did it. Could be 
that she was, this group of her friends did it. So, he's talking about something being crystal clear. Uh, sometimes they just throw words out. Crystal clear, but I felt like it was a crystal. It was a clear crystal instead of being crystal clear. She's not explaining. That's up to her. Okay, so she's showing me you sitting there like drumming your fingers, like drumming, just drumming your fingers, like, okay, when's it going to happen? What's, you know, what are we going to do? And she's showing, like, all around you. I don't know if you can feel them or not. Everybody feels energy different, so what? There's guides. There's deceased loved ones. There's a man. There's a man. There's a man that's more prominent. And the other ones are kind of like shadow figures. Not like the creepy shadow figures. But if they're if they're not individually important, they don't they won't show themselves. Yeah. How do I explain that? Anyway, man. Um, almost looks like a straw hat. Not like a big floppy straw hat, but and I can't really see him well enough to describe him, so he's not going to step forward enough. Can't really describe him. Can't even really tell for sure what age he is, but he's he's a man. Not young. I'm not getting the. He's related to you, but I can't get the relationship either. He's not stepping forward enough for me to. His name starts with a J or a G. I think they always give me G names, though. We stink at names. We really do. So, anyway, they're all standing there waiting for you to ask for their help. Knowing that they can't do anything to override your free will choice. So, you don't have to know who each individual one is. Just go, hey, team. Can you help me with blah, blah, blah? And the appropriate one will step into the job. But then you have to allow it. So you got, you've got plenty of them standing there waiting. And we all do, actually. Even I go, ah, I don't need you guys. I can do it on my own. Works better if you ask them. Okay. So Grandma wants you to know she's ready and willing. She's kind of like, <laughs> she's the ringleader, she says. <laughs> so ask her for help. If she can't do it, she'll find somebody who can. If it's not in your best interest or for your uh, what you're supposed to have on your path forward, it won't happen. Or you'll take that scenic route again. You don't want to do that. Okay. She's, oh, she's ringing a bell. Hang on. Let me grab mine. It looks similar to this. Only this is one of my chakra bells. But she's, she doesn't mean for you to go get a chakra bell. That's, uh, that's not the kind of ringing. But, like a school bell when she's ringing. It's not this big. So when you hear a sound like a school bell dingling, and again, validate or acknowledge her. Tell her you love her. Let her know that you know that that's her. And you can be anywhere and hear that. You can see one on TV, on Facebook, doesn't matter where. You can be walking through Walmart and 
feel your head pulled to the side and there could be a picture of one or there could be one sitting there or anything like that. So know that she's a, she's a very strong, very willing uh, guide for you. So talk to her. Hey, what do you got to lose? <laughs> she loves you very much. She's, <laughs> she's been giving you lots of signs. As she's leaving, she's almost like a flower girl as she's leaving, and she's throwing rose petals over her head to the back. So know when you find individual rose petals um, walking through the store, there might be one laying on the floor, or you might be walking through the flower section. Even the fake flowers in one of the petals could have broke off and be laying on the floor. Or you can get out of your vehicle somewhere where there's not even any roses around and there's a rose petal laying there. Know that that's a sign from her. I find weird stuff on the dash of my truck when it's locked and the windows are up. You never know. Much love to you, my dear. Thank you for allowing me to be her voice. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator. Voice for your loved ones. Thank you.